John was always such, even as a kid, I remember, <laughs> he, he was always so solid. He was always in control, you know. He was quiet, and if he had anything to say, it was certainly worth listening to. And I think he carried that trait all of his life. He's born on a farm at Newkirk, Oklahoma. We were tight. We always went to school together, come home together. Mother and dad always had a had a big round table and we all sat down and eat together. Dad made sure we all had three or four cows to milk, hogs to feed, bucket calves. And we were kept pretty busy on the farm there. John was a good student, a very popular student in school with the, the guys and also with the, the girls was always very fond of John. If, if he gave him that John smile, well, the, the, it was a pretty big deal, yeah. Then in high school, it was on the Future Farmers of America judging team, and we done real well. John T is gritty, and I got some grit from, from him. It's that toughness, and I don't know if that's something that was a product of his upbringing or just who he is, um, something that he carries, but uh, I sure love that about him. You know, he kind of came from a small town or, you know, maybe not from a whole lot and um, decided he was going to go after what he wanted. And so, um, of course, it's very inspiring. And, you know, I can kind of see what he's built and, you know, see his legacy. So by the time he was five or six years old, we had just went through the, the dust storm, the dust bowl, and the crop failure after crop failure. And I think he just seen so many failures that he thought they were had to be a better way of doing this then. Uh, John was not one to take uh, defeat in his sense of imagination. He was not one to quit or give up. And so I would say that hard times really motivated him a lot in his uh, ideas to succeed at agriculture. You grow up in that kind of environment with those kind of experiences, and it's a tremendous motivation to, to escape and to have a different life and to be able to provide. And so some of it was born of experience, challenging experiences during the depression, during the Dust Bowl, and part of it was just his innate genius, right? My dad has always had, I think even in childhood, this entrepreneurial spirit and I, um, experienced it from a very young age forward, but I saw it in in uh, his business that he started and founded. I saw it in his outside investments and interests, and I saw it in his hobbies growing up. And it seemed like they were all pretty vast. He founded Hermes Landscaping in 1965. At that time, I was four years old, but he had at that time five children ages six and under. And he was a traveling salesman. He had this crazy idea that he could go in the landscaping business and went out and bought a 1959 Ford four wheel drive pickup truck, a trailer, two lawnmowers, an orchard sprayer, and a Ford 8N tractor. And he was a landscaper. For me, I look back and I think, what a courageous act. As a child, worked there every summer growing up, and I was always so proud to be part of the company and the legacy. He had this incredible gift of making work fun and it became a place of connection, a, uh, a place of learning, a place of growth. I think it gave us all a kind of a, a greater connection with the earth and connection with nature. Which I, and, I, and I can still see that in everybody as adults. I can't help but admire how easy he made everything look. Building a business and raising seven children and the patriarch of a family with 13 grandchildren and running a household and providing opportunity for all of us to be involved in music and sports. And somehow he promoted excellence without micromanaging us. I feel like when I got him for a dad, I won the lottery. He would give us all of us a lot of rope, you know, a lot of leeway, a lot of you know freedom to try things and, and encouragement. And 
it helped me and helped all of us, I think, build confidence to, to know that we can get things done. And it, those are really powerful lessons as a child. There's some really fun things that I know about him during that time. He loved a good party and he loved to host. And I don't think that ever changed with him. All of his children now really enjoy having company and really enjoy hosting and are gracious that way. And I think that would have been a really fun part of life is to experience those those nights with them. He has just this, the deepest love for his family and he is so proud of everyone. Um, I think that he feels honored to be a part of our lives and we feel the same way about him. I think that he has an incredibly comforting presence. It is nice to be around him, which brings people together because he is so comforting and he's such a great listener that it has connected our family for this long and will continue to. And he is sturdy and he is strong and he is um, so patient. I won't ever forget how much she loved his children and his grandchildren. He always asked about the people in his life. Something about him that I'll never forget is just the way that he would always jump up and have a huge smile on his face and be so happy to see me when I walked in the door. He has a, a mind for, for detail and it says a couple things like one he's just very sharp two he's like he actually really listens and pays attention which is a, a really good feeling it's kind of a, a cool thing he would always create that time and space for us to be together and it was really special and he'd always be there to support each of his grandkids when everyone was told that john t our grandfather was going to be there it just made it really special and he left an impact. Definitely say holidays, kind of celebration, family, um, getting together uh, and just sharing a moment um, where we can all kind of connect around his great food. Because I lived far away, we came often for holidays and he just does everything right. There was not one thing where you're like, oh, this is dry. <laughs> like, this isn't seasoned right. He was just, He's so talented in many things. And one of them is his cooking. We were the first ones up in the house when I was probably at seven. And he asked me what I wanted to eat for breakfast. And I told him uh, pancakes. And he asked me if I've ever had banana pancakes. And I told him no. And uh, he whipped them up for me. And it's one of the best things I've ever eaten <laughs> to this day is my grandfather's banana pancakes. I think that he loves people through their bellies. And he had all these nuggets of wisdom that should be written down in the cookbook. There's one that he says that in order to have a good piece of meat, you need to have both bone and fat, which is why when he eats, you know, there's always a bone in chicken. I love fried chicken. And I debated having a big old pile of fried chicken here with me because uh, I know that him and I share that in common. That's that's one of my, one of my favorite foods. On my Instagram, I have a picture saved of some meatloaf he made. One thing that I always found um, kind of unique and comforting at the same time was lamb with mint jelly. Of course, I think a popular answer is gonna be bread pudding. He makes the best bread pudding with a creme anglaise and hopefully we have the recipe somewhere. I'll always think of him whenever I have a good bowl of bread pudding. That bread pudding is something special. Um, nobody could do gravy like him. I remember always just large family gatherings and a lot of people being there and a lot of gravy was served. I came over for Christmas Eve dinner and I was in charge of making biscuits. Grandpa had a recipe and came over and he rolled up his sleeves and got in the kitchen and made these biscuits with me and they were so good. My dad never cooked anything that wasn't great, nothing. Everything was great. He kind of wasn't afraid to take on big things like carving up a whole side of beef or making cinnamon rolls from scratch or homemade vanilla ice cream and kind of a natural cook and totally unmeasured about it. A Little bit of this, a little bit of that. He's a fabulous 
fabulous cook, right? But the one that sticks out in my mind, when he was traveling, a traveling salesperson, I'm saying from the, my age, three to five, he'd come home on Friday night, he, he got a big hotel pot that he would make vegetable beef soup on in over the weekend. And then we'd have it for dinner Monday through Friday. And then he'd come back again on the weekend and make vegetable beef soup. <laughs> There wasn't anything related to the landscape industry that he didn't want to try. And so there were a lot of interesting projects that we worked on. We did the Indian Creek Green Belt and we built the Deanna Rose Farmstead and we, most of Corporate Woods and most of Crown Center, Worlds of Fun, KCI, the stadiums. I mean, there was a lot of really big projects that we worked on in those years. And he, he did the most fun things at the company with the with the employees and the team, there was always some planning to, you know, whether it was a, a fishing trip or a cookout or a 4th of July party. So he had this great nature of not taking life too seriously. From the time we were really young, I'd say in the early, early, early mid 60s, he went out and bought a couple Sicilian donkeys. And then later in life, he got more interested in draft mules, but both of them are these long-eared creatures that he seemed to always have such a place in his heart for these long, these long-eared animals. And there's been more than one joke about how personalities of a mule and dad are similar. He's been accused of being stubborn from time to time, which is really another great quality. My Aunt Elise and I call him a redwood tree. He's just strong and he's a very tall, handsome man and he has that humble, quiet strength to him that everyone can feel, but it's not intimidating. It's just awe-inspiring. Something so stable and hearty and consistent and grounded, you can set your heart by it. It's really beautiful because I can see that grittiness and that sturdiness in my siblings and in my nieces and nephews. And um, that comes from my dad. I just always saw him kind of going after what he wanted. And I'd like to think that I tried to do the same. Just being strong and stable and calm. He has been a leader in my life. And not just because he's my grandfather, but because he's taken on that role as a leader. I um, recently got married and at the wedding, we had all of my Hermes cousins line up and take a picture. I noticed that everyone has these really long fingered hands and they're his. There's just something very elegant about him in general, but when you look at his hands and how they hold themselves and how they hold others, and how they hold the book and how they play the piano and how they paint and how they sculpt. It is really an honor that I have his hands. In a whole lifetime, you're lucky if you meet one Renaissance man, much less be raised by one. And one of the many gifts he gave me was to appreciate getting older. He modeled for me that life can begin again and again and again, and that something wonderful and unexpected and fun is waiting for you just around the corner. He has just been a student of life, um, cooking, baking, painting, sculpting, yoga, reading, I love that he does Pilates with Christina. I think that's so cute. You know, he used his his grit and his perseverance to like take something like piano, which he started late and he just used his perseverance to methodically develop a skill and produce something that's that's a that's beautiful and, and artistic. His intellect and his appreciation for philosophy and Education has absolutely been passed down through his children. They're all brilliant. I remember going to symphony with him, listening to beautiful music and all the art that he's created. 
he's definitely influenced our whole family in that aspect. All of the grandkids have some sort of musical or artistic appreciation or hobby or flair to them. I think a lot of that comes from him. So my grandpa being an artist is something that I love most about him. He's incredible. You like walk into his home and his home is its own art gallery of beautiful paintings and sculptures that he's done over the years. I know he didn't pick it up until after he retired. So that's really incredible. I did study visual arts during undergrad and it was like in my blood that I'm an artist. It's been really fun to watch my dad travel and enjoy the world with Christina and the love of art that they share. And I think they found a natural innate elegance in each other. My dad is a really elegant person and so is Christina and they have this sort of beautiful, refined way that they live. They've created these paintings as memories from all of these trips that they've taken together. Mexico was an annual trip every year. They have this like really amazing community of people in Puerto Vallarta. But I got to go one year and we would share a really, they would, took us out to incredible meals and come home and share a bottle of wine and just talk and talk and talk. He's so easy to converse with and I felt so seen and heard on that trip and cared for and the, it was the best trip of my life. <laughs>and passionate about life. To me, the only way I can describe him, he's just solid, you know. He was a good son to his mother and father. He was an excellent sibling to his brothers and sister, and uh, an excellent father to his kids. Building up his business and uh, and his family, uh, that, uh, that just took a lot of, like, very persistent, very steady work. He's a very strong man and getting past any obstacle that anyone might have put in his path. I feel that same determination. How he defines success at this point in his life, I think is different than how he defined success when he started the business, for example. I think he would define it as, is he able to give and receive love from, from his children, his, his grandchildren, and from Christina. And I think that's really what matters to him at this point in his life is, is his children and his grandchildren and his wife. Part of success for him is just being able to listen to people, which I think is probably one of the greatest honors that we can do for another human being is to listen, and he's a fabulous listener. At every stage of life, there's something to learn, something to appreciate, something to master, something to give, and someone to love. I am so proud of the part of him that lives in my heart. I was just thinking about you and I miss you. I love you and uh, take care. Bye.